Welcome everybody to today's webinar, Managing a Multi-Generational Workforce. This is one in a series of webinars that we present on a regular basis. Uh, it's a free series that we give as give back to the community. Our speaker today is Vijay Verma. Vijay is an internationally renowned speaker and a best-selling author. He's written several books. His three volume series on the human aspects of project management was published by PMI, the Project Management Institute. And aside from the PMBOK guide, are the top three selling project management books in the world. He's received the PMI Fellow Award, one of their highest prestigious awards, the David I. Cleland Project Management Literature Award for his books, and the PMI Distinguished Contribution Award for his sustained and significant contributions to the PM profession. He's also received the, an Honorary Fellow Award from the PMI Southern Alberta Chapter, and recently he received a fellow award from the Project Management Association of Canada. He's well known, has given numerous speeches at many conferences around the world. He spent much of his career, um, over 39 years, managing projects for Triumph, the Tri University Mason facility. It's a particle accelerator and research facility in uh, University of British Columbia in Vancouver, Canada. And he's provided project management services for all kinds of projects, all kinds of sizes and has developed project management systems for research facilities and technology transfer, and is well known in the PM community. Thank you very much, Vijay. Welcome to today's session. Thank you very much, Kevin. And it's a pleasure to have an opportunity to share my experiences uh, with the audience. Well, as uh, Kevin said, my name is Vijay Verma. The topic for today's uh, webinar is managing a multi-generational workforce. I am from Triumph, as Kevin said, at, which is located at University of British Columbia. And uh, I think we'll just get started and uh, get Excellent. going. So the topic Excellent. for today. Before, before we get too far in, I just have a couple of housekeeping items. Okay. So every, everybody on this session, the session is being recorded and will be made available later on YouTube for those who uh, missed it or who missed part of it, or if you have uh, audio issues or what have you. Um, Right now, it is recording VJ, his uh, his voice and his screen. Uh, VJ, you may want to share your camera. The camera won't be recorded, though, but people will be able to see the speaker as he's going. During the session, if you have questions, please enter them into the question or the chat window. Thank you, VJ. We can see you now. Please enter your questions into the chat window or the questions window, and we will address them later on at the end of the presentation. We'll have time for Q&A at the end. But don't try and remember all your questions because uh, you might forget them. Just type them into the chat window to capture them as we go. VJ, your camera was on, it's off again. You may want to turn it back on. Okay. Is it on? There you go, it, it's on. And uh, uh, VJ, take it away. Okay, very good. So let me just, uh, as I said, the topic for today, good morning, first of all, everybody from my side, because I'm on the West Coast, and good afternoon to everybody else on the East Coast. Because when we talk about the doing virtually, it's amazing that how well can we can be connected in spite of the different time zones and everything. So the webinar today is managing a multi-generational workforce. which is a reality for uh, everybody, which is a reality for most business organizations because we have our workforce working on the projects, working on any businesses which are from multi-generations. And uh, all generations have different viewpoints, different expectations and different work ethics and so on. So it is really becomes a challenge. How do we really manage our multi-generational workforce? And that's what we're going to talk about today. As Kevin said, that's me. These are the three books that I published with Project Management Institute. I was working actually most of the time from 10 o'clock at night to three o'clock in the morning after I spent time with my children, helping them with their homework. So with that schedule, working up to three o'clock in the morning, my wife told me no more books but I guess I've been trying to influence her for the last many years. And finally, my fourth book came out, The Art of Positive Politics, A Key to Delivering Successful Projects, which was launched in 2018 at the Project World Conference 
in Toronto. So let's talk about it. Qu various questions and issues about managing a multi-generational workforce. First one that we all have to realize it and accept that the generational diversity is the norm for most business organizations. That's the way it's going to be. Different cultures and generations may lead to misunderstanding, misconceptions, and mistaken assumptions, and that can happen. Millennials, which is really are now increasing more and more in percentages than most business organizations or most organizations. So I think it's very, very important to have some knowledge about how they think and who they are. Millennials have a competitive advantage because of their computer proficiency and high engagement in social media. And this is certainly as compared to us, the baby boomers. So what are the viewpoints and work related values of different generations? That's what we have to know in order to manage and lead them. How to enhance synergy in the multi-generational teams, because that's the reality now. And what are the best practices for overcoming management and leadership challenges in multi-generational work environments? So what should you do? I think we all have to pay attention. A, accept this fact appreciate this and appreciate that there are going to be differences in viewpoints and so on so instead of getting hung up on the differences the important thing is to capitalize on those differences okay so i think this webinar could be a starting point to get you to give you some overview my learning objectives are divided them into two main categories today one is the overview of multi generations that's what i will do talking about generations and the world events, which influence them, what are the issues for next generation, what are the expectations of Gen Y, and what are the four key challenges of multi-generational workforce. And then the other part of the objective is, how do you manage the multi-generational teams? That's where we need to know about their expectations, work-related values, enhancing synergy, and I may be, if you like, or I may actually spend a little bit more time towards the end, how to really manage and lead millennials. Because that is really what our most of the proportion of our workforce is going to be in the next few years. When we talk about multi-generational workforce, it has its own culture, which is like an iceberg. Iceberg in the sense that the behaviors and practices that what we observe, and what is hidden. So what we observe is there is a lot of multi-generational teams, multi-generational workforce, and then you have virtual teams. And that is what is also becoming a new norm now that everybody is really working from home and lots of people are working in this virtual environment. And especially when the organizations here are really outsourcing a lot of work to other countries where you have people from different generations and working remotely. So that poses additional challenges. Just knowing what, are, what is above the water, what is important to know is what is hidden. So it is important to know when we talk about multi-generationals, what are their assumptions? What are their attitudes towards work and towards other people? What are their values or values? What are their beliefs? What are their work ethics? And I think that's important to know. What do they expect? from others in the organization? What kind of communication do they like to use? In other words, in terms of how they communicate with others and how they like to be communicating. And that's very important. And same thing about motivation, how they get motivated and how do they try to motivate others as well? So I think those are the various issues that we have to know which is hidden. And only way to find that out is take some time, try to understand different, different generations and then do things accordingly. So the multi-generations in workplace, we still have some of the traditionalists, which were born before 1943 or veterans, we call it. Then we have the baby boomers born in 1943 to 1960. So the youngest one I think now is what we have about 61 years old and the oldest one is 77 years old. So they possibly all have retired the 77 year olds. 
but we still have many baby boomers left in the organizations working with Gen Xers and millennials. Gen Xers are born from 60 to 80, millennials are 80 to 2000. This is according to some of the statistics and the research that uh, I have come across. What is most important for us who are trying to manage multi-generational workforce is to understand and appreciate the real differences between older and the younger generations and how do they approach work. In terms of these things, it might be good for managers and the leaders to understand what are the major world events that each of those generations felt because that influences the way they think and the way they act as well. What are their values and expectations? What are their work ethics? What are the team building challenges? And what are the management and leadership challenges? Let's look at the generation game. This is really what some of the different generations come to you and say, and this is how they think. Some of the youngsters may come to you, say, to the baby boomers, if they're the supervisors or the managers, say, I have a new rule. I will not attend meetings that go beyond 5 p.m. I have a life and have my own priorities. That's the way they are. And the other thing is that, so I told my boss, that if you're looking for a loyalty, buy a dog. I will do my work. I will do my assignments to the best of my ability, but nothing much more than that. And the baby boomers, what do they think? They say, oh my God, he has no work ethics. He's just lazy. And at his age, I was grateful that I had a job. And here he is trying to show himself too much. And then he asks me on top of that, do you have an email address? And I felt like telling him, yes, since you are in diapers, buddy. These are the various sounds of generations in conflict. You hear that after the happy hours, lunch times, Facebook walls, tweets, Tumblr blogs, and in text messages. Baby boomers kind of think they have no work ethics. They just want everything handed to them. This is really how we, the baby boomers, feel about the younger generation. You scheduled a meeting for 3 p.m. on Friday. That's a lie, because most of the millennials, if it is a nice day, they want a work-life balance and they want to be out of the office and enjoy themselves. She wants to meet with senior managers regularly to get feedback on her performance and she just started. The baby boomers are surprised on situations like this because they just felt that when they started, they would spend some time establishing themselves in the organizations before they really can ask all these feedbacks from their managers and so on. And then the younger people will say, well, if you ask me to write one more vision statement, I'm out of here because we keep on writing vision statements and we are not really doing much. That's the way they think. You send the meeting request by email. I only check my email once a week. That's how sometimes uh, the older people really thinks about. HR just got clearance so we can use Facebook at work. I don't have the courage to tell them We've been bouncing Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter off a proxy server for many, many years. As a matter of fact, some of these social networks, like even surfing the internet or Facebook, HR's departments are becoming more and more acquainted with those things. And they're realizing that these are the things that the younger generation looks for. They use it. And sometimes they use it actually to the benefit of the organization. So they want to have an access to that one. It has these things were off according to HR, you know, five years ago. So that's what is becoming the reality. Let's look at an overview of the multi generations. Patrons, traditionalists, I think not many of them, uh, they're over 77 years now. So I, many of them possibly are retired. Some of them may still be hanging in the offices and so on because there is no mandatory retirement age. Uh, the population column there is what is in North America statistics. Baby boomers, they are now 60 to 77 years old. So the 60 years old are kind of preparing for retirement or some of them are still planning to work beyond 
they are 65, which used to be the typical age for retirement. Gen X's are 40 to 60 years. And Gen Y's are 20 to 40 years. Now, let me say a little bit about Gen X's. Uh, there are lots of things being assumed about Gen X's that they're more skeptical, they're more for themselves. But actually, it is something to realize that they would could be called what I may call the sandwich generation. Sandwich generation in the sense that they have their own children who are growing up and going to the university and so on. So if you're about 50 years old, you will have some children going to the high school or the university and so on. And at the same time, some of them have their parents still living and they have a responsibility to look after them as well. That does cause quite a bit of stress, actually because they feel obligated to look after their parents as well and morally, and then they also have to look after their own uh, children as well. And the Gen Ys are 20 to 40 years now. So the, and more and more, the younger, younger ones than 20 years are also entering the workforce. I think we'll have another name for that generation as well in another five, 10 years. And that is also becoming quite dominant in the workforce. What are the world events related to each of those generations? Traditionalists had the Second World War, followed by a Great Depression, first flight into space, economic prosperity started, and there were some more white collar jobs. Baby boomers, I think most of the Gen Y and Gen X thinks that the baby boomers had the best time but they went through Vietnam War for many, many years. Assassination of Kennedy, Dr. Martin Luther King, moon landing and widespread pro protests. And when the, in the baby boomers, when they were about, I would say, 30, 20, 20, 25 years old and so on, when they're finishing the university, there were lots of opportunities in the society. There was a lot of good industrial revolutions uh, on its peak. So there was a more chances of working hard and getting ahead economically and so on and financially. Gen X is, that's when the Cold War stopped. Internet started and growing. More and more women started working, getting into the workforce and divorce rate up. And that is because of the pressure when two income families are there and both husband and wife are working, it is quite a stressful, day life they have because each of them has got their own stress of work and then the children. I think that is might explain why the Gen X's are more skeptical and try to be for themselves. Uh, millennials, they went through this terrorism 9-11. It really did change the world quite a lot in terms of how you fly, what kind of security you go through, and that did start a war in Afghanistan, which have lasted for many, many, many years, and still there are some troops there. Berlin Wall, global warming, AIDS, school violence, more and more violence is starting in the schools and so on, internet and the technology, which is going to be with us for a long, long time. Okay, so these are just some of the events. The reason I think it's important to know about the world events, because that does affect people. These are the issues for mixed generations. Because since we have multi generations in our workforce and the issues we face, the management faces as well, how do we recruit these people? How do we recruit different, different generations? How do we do the orientation for them? How do we provide them the right opportunities for retaining them as well as for empowering them and helping them grow? What about, about developing them? How do we motivate each generation? How do we mentor and how do we lead? So these are just some of the challenges and issues for different, different generations. Let's look at the viewpoints of multi-generations, the way they see the world. And the viewpoints I'm gonna talk about are seven of them, like what is their outlook? What are their work ethics? What's their view about authority? How do they look at the formal authority or the hierarchical or the positional power? What kind of leadership do they like? 
what the kind of relationships do they like to keep at work and in society? What is their perspective about the society and what turns them off? So traditionalists were very practical, dedicated, respectful. They, they liked hierarchical relationships, hierarchical leadership, personal sacrifice they were after, civic minded. Baby boomers, and that's really quite a big percentage of our workforce is still baby boomers as well. Optimistic, driven, view of authority. Some of them love it, some of them hate it. I think it all depends upon individuals. Uh, leadership style, they like consensus style. Relationships are more personal uh, and gratification, and the perspective is the team. So let's talk, think about it, about Gen Xers and Gen Millennials which is quite a good percentage of our workforce now. Gen Xers are skeptical, but balanced. As far as the work ethic is concerned, unimpressed competence is there. They want leaders to be very competent, reluctant to commit, self-reliant, and they don't like cliches and hype. Millennials are very, very hopeful about the future. I mean, they really, because they have seen and they have been getting everything since they were children. So they're very hopeful for the future as well. And that is going to be a very tough thing for some of them, because in some cities in Canada, especially, where the real estate is so high, uh, how they will be able to afford their house, first house or even after that. I think that's a tough one. They're very determined. They're polite as far as the authority is concerned. Leadership is pulling. So what they expect their leaders is to seek their input, incorporate their input, and they want leaders to pull and empower all the other people in the organization as well. Expect that from the leaders. Okay, rather than just showing me their power. Relationships, they want to be connected and included, connected to the part of the organization and so on. They are they have very civic sense of duty and the turnoffs are when the management does not have any purpose, promiscuity, that they are lacking plan and purpose and that's really what turns them off. Let's talk about tackling the challenges of multi-generational workforce. And here, so first thing really, when we're talking about the challenges of multi-generational workforce, we need to know what is our company culture. What are the working relationships? What social events we have? What award ceremonies do we have? How do we organize them? How do we conduct them? And so on. What kind of regular HR surveys do we do in order to get a pulse on your employees? Communication styles, very, very important. Be aware of the preferred communication style of each generation. I mean, do they really how much importance do they give to the vocal tones? How much importance do they give to the body language? Body language is very, very important for the younger generation as well. So you need to know what is their preferred communication style. Use of abbreviations, informal language, the jargons, colloquialisms may cause communication breakdown, but these kind of, these days, there are so many so many jargons in technology that millennials like to use. They will just say, okay, what is your portal doing? What is dashboard and all those kind of things they use. And I think some of the baby boomers like me might wonder what they are. Negative stereotypes, make a conscious efforts to understand others. Don't, don't, you, don't be stereotyping the approach. Challenge your own preconceived notions, okay? Challenge them and just don't really go on a stereotyping thing. And the fourth one is the cultural expectations, which is very, very important. Adopting to the new technologies and work trends. Priority is about work-life balance. Compensation is based upon performance. That's what millennials and Xers are think they, they are very have a strong views about that one, that the compensation should not be based upon seniority, that how long have you been breathing on the job, it should be based upon performance. And that is why you can see that in Silicon Valley, in California and Toronto and everywhere else, the younger generations 
is earning good money because they're really, really technologically very proficient. Rewards, recognitions, and feedback. And all generations should be open and flexible because we all should take a view that we have something to learn from each other. And leaders should accept different work styles. No work style is right or wrong. It is just different. Okay. These are, let me just give you some of the expectations of Gen Ys. This is what they expect from the organization, from their supervisors, and from the team members as well. So the organization, they feel their expectation is that must provide challenging work that really matters because they really want to have some more creativity. They want some challenging, which really makes them think because they think that's the way and that helps them grow. Balance delicate tasks with freedom and flexibility. So really, when the tasks are delegated to them, they just want to be told what it is that they are expected to do, not tell the details of what the process is and the procedure they are to use. They want to be able to use their own. They want to have some freedom about that. Offer increasing responsibilities as rewards. So money may be one thing, but then in addition to money, they actually want more and more responsibilities because that's how they feel they would grow themselves and they'll be prepared for the future as well. Spend time to know staff members and their skills. Gen Ys are very, very interested in that. They want to be well connected. They want to know the other staff members and their skills so that they can learn from them and maybe they can teach them some of the things as well. So just cross training. Provide ongoing training and learning opportunities. And that is very, very true because the technology is changing so fast. Some of the things can become obsolete in just two years. So the ongoing training has to be provided by the organizations. Create a comfortable, low stress work environment. That's quite interesting, actually. When my children were going through the school, my youngest daughter, when she was in grade nine, they had a some consultant or a counselor come to their school to ask them or to determine and find out from the students what do they want to become as they grow up or as they really get into the university. And the three main criteria they used was which profession gives them more money, where there's a less stress, and when there is a more permanency means that or that particular uh, profession would stay for a longer time. My daughter, the youngest one, knew at that time what does she want to become. She chose the profession. She really liked the profession, which really come, came out on her profile. Money part was fairly okay, but stress was her highest priority. So she really went into optometry, which is a very good. A profession, low stress, they can choose their own hours. And I think she is, uh, she is pretty successful. She has a optometry practice uh, along with two other doctors that she has hired in Victoria. Establishing mentoring relationships. And these mentoring relationships has to be two ways. That the baby boomers can teach the younger generation based upon their practical experiences, reflect on that, and they and uh, they can learn a lot of technological things from the younger generations too. Allow flexible work schedules, focus on work, be personable, and have a sense of humor. They really don't like uh, the leaders or the managers who are very rigid and having no sense of humor, and they want to see a balance between the roles of the boss and the team player. You may be my boss, but when we are working together, I think you did. You need not show your formal power too much, and let's act as a team, where everybody helps everybody. Right? That's what the team is. Together, everyone achieves more. And the other one is that be respectful, and call forth respect in return. Gen Y will say that I will be respectful to you, but I also want a respect in return. Treat us as colleagues, not as interns or teenagers. OK, provide us constructive feedback consistently and they want timely feedback. 
open feedback and constructive feedback and reward us when we have done a good job. So these are some of the expectations. The reason I really listed those here is so that you can figure out that this is what we expect. And when you are really trying to manage them or lead them, then you should try to make sure that you can really provide uh, or meet some of those expectations. So one of the important questions here is to think about is which of the above expectations are not supported by your organization? Then maybe your organization has to think about those things, how they can support that. Now let's talk about from the team side, managing people from the multi-generations. You will see that that I'm coming again and again over this viewpoint and the main thing about the multi-generations is or even the people from different cultures is don't dwell on differences. Recognize and appreciate that the differences do exist, but the important thing is how to capitalize on those differences. Okay. Traditionalists who seemingly won't over -retire, ever retire. Baby boomers who are mystified by the Facebook and the other social network. Gen Xers who are only out for themselves and the millennials who wear flip flops in the office. So these things should not really worry you so much, especially the dress code. I mean, you know, and the same thing is that they're still having their cell phones in the meetings and trying to text on those ones as well. So we sometimes wonder from the culture we came from as a baby boomers, are they paying attention to the meeting? Are they listening? But most of the time they are actually, they're just very fast. Okay, building, build a collaborative relationships. That's very, very important when you're managing people from multi-generations. Treat your workers as your partners. We're all in it together. We all are supposed to help each other. Encourage everyone and encourage open discussions. Study your employees. Where are they coming from? What are the main core values they hold on to? Find out their preferred communication style. Be aware of their planned professional paths. This younger generation, I mean, baby boomers also worried about that one, but for them, the job security was the most important thing. But the younger generation now, millennials, they want to know what is the professional path as an option open to them. If they cannot see that clearly, they're out of there. Okay. Appreciate their work style, work lifestyle and the priorities. Other thing that you need to do when you're managing people from multi generations, create opportunities for cross generation mentoring. It doesn't have to be one way. It's a two way mentoring system, young to old and old to young and use mixed age work teams. That's a good idea. Instead of really trying to put in teams together of the similar age or similar generation, it's a good idea to have a mixed age generation because you do learn, you do learn new things. You learn some new viewpoints, you learn some new ideas and so on. And I think that's a worthwhile thing to do. And I do this on a, some of the on a social basis and community service basis when I'm on the board or something or some advisory committees, I'll try to make sure that there are younger people because they are the future. So there are always some younger people on those committees and they do come up with good ideas. And of course, they'll look after all the computer part. Consider life paths, very, very important. Where employees are in their lives and what are their needs? What it is that they want to do in the next three years, five years, 10 years, and so on. Flexibility between responsibilities versus money and advancements, and the time for training versus work-life balance and job enrichment. Job enrichment is very, very important to this younger generation as well, actually, these days. So let's look at some of the expectations. And the values. So traditionalists have the loyalty, conformity, frugal, and so on. Let's talk about the baby boomers. They were very optimist. Personal growth, status value, involvement, and competitive. Gen X's, global thinking, self-reliance, flexibility, and the Gen Y's are optimism. They have a civic sense of duty, street smart. They're very street smart. 
self-confident and environmentally concerned. I mean, you saw that just a few months ago that one of the youngest, very young person was the one who was leading the climate change in Canada and uh, as an activist and uh, initiated various protests and the processions and so on. And they're, they're very good. They're very high on the moral level. If somebody is not doing the right thing, they would call them out. And the outside life is more important. Work related, veterans, obedience, loyalty, and so on. Baby boomers are work alcoholic, innovation, personal growth, Gen X's are entrepreneurial, career growth, diverse work options they want, not just one thing doing all the time. And the Gen Y's are they have an importance on the outside life. They worry they really are concerned about their leisure time as well passion they're very good in multitasking younger kids even these days they could be doing their homework and listening to the music on the, putting their micro earphones up earphones and so on respect for diversity and they're very technologically rich there's a lot that the baby boomers can run learn from them i mean i have grandchildren my six-year-old tells me when we try to do the FaceTime with them, how to use the iPad, how to use the different features of the iPad and so on. So I'm really learning from a six year old. And they have a crave for praise and attention. So enhancing synergy in multi-generational teams, anticipate conflicts, capitalize on differences, which you should, as I said before, you should treat them as a strength address generational issues and validate differences that yes, differences do exist and there's nothing wrong about that at all. Let's just capitalize on that and be open to what different cohorts are looking for. What makes the work rewarding for them? Which environments are most productive for them? Okay, and what type of workload, schedules and policies contribute to the attractive workplace? and what will retain people. That's a very, very important thing. Retaining these days, because we all know it costs a lot of money when we have to hire people. So it is important thing is to retain the good people, it means that you really need to meet their needs, provide them the training, enrich their jobs, and so on. And I think that's uh, very, very important, actually. This is, uh, you can actually look at that one as well, as one of the take on imperative to enhance synergy in the multi-generational teams is they appreciate, accommodate, and turn their attitudes, uh, go for cohesiveness, because that's very important as a teamwork, uh, understand about organizational culture, use the operating style, what's the operating style and how open the lines of communication are, respect for competence, and what kind of non-verbal part of the communication people are interested in, nurturing creativity and so on. These are just some of the best practices for uh, multi-generational teams. Reward, as I, I, I've talked about quite a few of them already. I'll just run through very quickly. Rewards are based upon performance and productivity, offer training and professional development, offer mentoring programs, and also how to mentor so that it's more effective. Offer reverse mentoring for new technologies, study generational composition to come up with that strategies, match the generational component with customers. That's very important. If your customers are young, then it's very important that the team which is really trying to serve those customers is the younger, from the younger generation as well, so that they can relate to each other. Offer flexible work schedules, build a strong workforce, offer flexible benefits. Childcare is becoming a big, big thing because now, more and more women are in the workforce, very active, very professional. I mean, they really want to have a career. So the child care on the work site is also very important to them. And what sort of benefits? Because that's very, very important for them to have a balance between looking after their children because they have to drop their children off. And that's why the flexibility is there. Include representatives from all generations. Create common break areas to encourage informal communications and discussions. Reward managers for retaining talented employees. That's important. I think that is really what the leaders 
or the senior management should use that they should really encourage their managers that they should take actions and the, the way styles they should use management styles so that they can retain the talented employees because otherwise it costs a lot of disruptions and money and there's a high cost to the people when the people leave and they have to rehire or to be replaced and especially in this age where the technology is very important and they were doing something that gap is sometimes very very difficult and it affects the productivity of the whole organization quite a lot and offer management and leadership training to create high performance teams with mixed generations that's very very important let me share with you some of the well some of the quotes about before i really do that let me just give you some idea about nine points i wanted to emphasize here about how to manage and lead millennials help them learn they are after learning gaining experience and positioning for future believe in them the reason i'm really just showing you a little bit about the millennials because their proportion is increasing in the workforce so i thought let me just talk a little bit about them as well believe in them because they set goals they have potential they're confident they want to work hard and prove themselves tune into their technology uh, I came across a book by Dan Tapscott, Grown Up Digital. So instead of banning Facebook and other social networks, harness them. That's what the organization should do. And use texting more rather than email. I found that out with my children. If I send them a phone, they don't pick it up at all. I can leave a message. It's of no use. Email, not right away. You text them and you get the response right away. So texting is becoming very quick and they're very, very fast in that as well. Millennials want to be connected. So the big thing with them is engage them. Connect them and engage them. Social and work life is interconnected according to them. They want to network and be connected to and part of the organization. Let them make things of their own. They want freedom. Freedom of choices to freedom of expression. They want to be seen as individuals, not just follow the norm that most of the other people are doing. They modify the ringtones in their cell phones. They design their Facebook pages separately and so on. And they like to create their own solutions. So you need to know their goals. So they just want to know the goals and not the process. Other principles is tell them how they're doing. Millennials are very, very concerned that they want specific feedback and frequent feedback, not just touch-based meetings down the road. Because they're used to praise and attention right from the beginning and the feedback from their parents, and that's really what they expect from the workplaces as well. As a manager, be approachable. Create a teamwork environment and have open lines of communication. Another interesting thing to deal with millennials is plug into their parents. Most of their parents were very active and involved, and those parents of the millennials often challenged the poor grades and even uh, challenged the soccer coaches. I have seen the soccer games for my grandchildren. When I go there, you should see. You should see the enthusiasm. You should see the energy of the parents watching the game. And if the referee calls out something which looks questionable to them, they would go after the referee as well. So some of the organizations have done this, are doing it, offer a tour of the workplace so that the parents have a peace of mind. Be someone they can believe. That's very, very important. You as a manager or a leader need to really be a role model for them because they are very savvy customers. They can anticipate false promises and misinformation. So you as a manager or a leader has to walk your talk. And also because if sometimes they, somebody has taken undue advantage of them and when burnt, they can broadcast their displeasure with a click of a mouse. And we can see that all these days. If something they see happening on the street even, they'll quickly take the video 
and put it on the YouTube or put it outside, and then you can see that some of these things become very viral uh, very, very quickly, some of these images. So they're very, very good in these things. Okay, so let me just share with you some of the quotes that I come across. Learning about differences may be fun, but uh, learning about cooperation is useful, and it's here that generation that workplace becomes a valuable tool. Every generation blames the generation before them. A generation is not defined by the options it has, but by the choices it makes. So each generation has to take some responsibilities. Each generation imagines itself to be more intelligent than the one that went before it and wiser than the one that comes after it. Okay, so I think uh, X thought that they are better than the Y and uh, vice versa. Every generation is more influenced by technology and this technology is changing so fast. Each generation supposes that the world was simpler than the one before it. That's what I hear from my children. That oh my God, you guys had a great life. You had a beautiful life, but we had our own challenges as well. So what I want to end up with quickly is uh, be enthusiastic when you are man managing the multi-generational workforce. Stay enthusiastic because if you can only enthuse others, if you believe in the last four letters, means I am sold myself. I think that's very, very important. So just do not try to do the great things, do the little things with love. I just want to end with the, some of the other uh, seminars that we have from Procept. Uh, other webinars that we did one on March 24th, analyzing your political landscape for project success. That was a very good, based upon my book on art of positive politics, swimming with sharks without being eaten alive. So how do you stay in an environment and be politically sensible? We're doing the one today. In May, we'll have a manager's guide to developing trust and synergy and creating self-motivated project team is in June. And most of these are all Wednesdays. And in September, we'll talk about leader or a manager, art of balancing both to achieve success. And we may put in the negotiation one, mastering the win-win approach, art of positive politics, art of influencing with the thought without authority. So all of these could also be given as a half day to one day workshops. So please contact Procept Associates, Kevin, who really gave us the introduction in the beginning to organize these workshops for your organizations if you like. And these are just some of the other seminars also I give. My very popular seminar is this Power Influence in Politics, and I've been doing it for PMI for about over 15 years. And this can be, this two day workshop can be broken down into two one day workshops. One is the art of positive politics, a key to delivering successful projects. The other one is art of influencing without authority. And uh, then there are lots of others as well. So keynotes can be presented on all of these about topics as well as the workshops. So if anybody is interested, please contact Procept Associates. Go on their website. They have a list of excellent courses to help any organization. And uh, they are also the authorized training providers from PMI. So I think uh, it's you really con you contact them and you've got very, very knowledgeable group of people. Okay. Thank you very much, Vijay. Thank you very much. I will be, I, I can take any questions. Yeah, perfect. So now anybody wants to type in a question, please type it in the chat window or the questions window. Um, please type them in there and I'll read them out for VG to respond. Um, okay, the first one came in from Raina, or Raina. Um, uh, she, she asks, how do you deal with Gen Gen related, so generation related conflicts? Uh, yes, first of all, you have to understand that the conflicts will be there. So Gen X related conflicts are, you have to know a little bit about the younger generations in the sense that they really are very open. They like open lines of communication. They'll come out and say the things very quickly. Whereas we baby boomers were very careful about the power distance index, about the authority power and so on. 
So the best thing to deal with them is don't come out and give them a solution right away. Let them find a solution themselves. So this really what, for example, my children are using with their children, means my grandchildren, is to sit down with them and ask them themselves, did you make the right choice? So I think you need to make them think really, so where did the conflict start from? Was I responsible? Could I have done anything better in that as well? So I think you just have to be more open and as a first step, accept them the way they are. Okay. Don't Excellent. try to impose your own views on them. Excellent, thank you. Does There's that another... answer your question, Rana? She types yes. I'm assuming oh. Raina is a, a, a she. Uh, okay. Yes, she says she's a she. <laughs> yes. Okay, another question from Jarpreet. He says, with COVID closures, is one generation better able to work online or from home? I would say, I would say actually in my personal experience, uh, millennials are very much better working from home on a virtual platforms. And we as baby boomers, we had to catch up, we had to learn things very, very quickly. So I think because they are very, very good in technology. So baby boomers need to depend on them and ask them a few of the things. And that's what I'm doing. I'm just asking my children and grandchildren. I mean, I just learned a few things more about the technology. I was doing FaceTiming with my grandchildren yesterday. And then they taught me how to use different various features of the iPad that we did not even know. So I think uh, baby boomers have to have a more open style and be and accept that that they have a lot to learn from the younger generation. That's the way I will do it. Very good. Uh, Rodney asks, where or how can I find out more about how to manage these generations differently? Uh, there are quite a few books actually. Uh, Ron Zemke, Z E M K E. And with other two authors is uh, is good. I mean, there's a lot of material actually on that one. But if you contact Procept, we will be very interested to put a one-day workshop or something like that about managing multi-generational workforce because this is becoming a reality now. And more and more millennials and Gen Xs are going to be on the in the workforce now and the teams. And now even the younger ones are coming which are now less than 20 years old and 18 years old, and they're just finishing their high schools. They're coming into the workforce because now nobody is going to be thinking that I, I have a job and I'm going to have this job until I retire. All younger people are realizing it, that they may have to change their jobs, maybe eight to 10 times in their professional career total by the time they get 65, and they may have to change their line altogether and the specialty three or four times in the working life. Okay. So I think uh, contact me, contact Procept Associates if you like, but there are lots of books available. I like this Ron empty book written in a very simple and easy way. Okay, very good. Uh, another question from Ayala or Ayala. Ayala. Yes. Uh, are there any specific, to it? oh, this is, <laughs> sounds like, uh, I think it's a she has has a problem. <laughs> it says, are there any specific tips you have for baby boomers or Gen Xers supervising Gen Z co-op students? Gen Z co-op students. OK, so yeah, and I was going to I said that in the beginning that we're going to have a new word now. And I'm wondering what are they going to come up with a new word after this is Gen Z. What's the new letter they will come up with? I, I think when you're working with them, uh, they do need direction. The problem is that they think they don't need directions, but they do. So I think you have to be very, very tactful and just, just work with them. Communication is the best thing. And the way to do that is increase mutual understanding. And the way to increase mutual understanding is uh, increase the area of common interests means you need to start taking interest in their interests. And when that happens, that is when the communication happens as well quickly. That's what I did with my children as well as they were growing up. And that's what I'm doing with my grandchildren. 
if they are interested in American heroes and all kinds of new things, I need to understand who are they, what do they do, and what kind of things, you know, what kind of uh, toys are there, and so on, to learn from them. Because when you do that, then you can talk to them in their own language. And I think that's the biggest thing these days with Gen Z is because they're very precise and they're very concise. You can see that. You ask them, how are you doing, son? They'll say, good. Any problems? No. Where are you going? Out. Then would <laughs> I you think be that's just a teenage problem, though, because I did that to my parents. <laughs> and, then, and then would you be back? Later. <laughs> so what you need to do is when you have these co-ops or these, make them talk a little bit more so that make them express themselves. That way you will understand them better. But, okay. but the important thing is they don't think they need any directions, but actually they do. But you have to be very tactful. Very Does that good. answer your question, uh, Ayala? She Does that says, answer? She says sort of. Sort of. So you are looking for, uh, I, would, I would say share, share, the, share their interests. If you share their interests, you can really communicate with them and then you can figure out how much you really need to tell them or how much you really need to coach them about uh, what you need to get done. And, and then accept them, accept them and appreciate, first of all. I mean, everything these days, they want a lot of appreciation and uh, things should start that way. Oh my God, I see your point. That sounds very good and very interesting. Can you express a little bit more about that? Can you elaborate on that? Okay, and, that's when you may, and that's when you find out maybe what they have is not good or is very, very good. And you should be changing. Thank you very much, Vijay. We're at the top of the hour, uh, so our time is up. Thank you, everybody, for, uh, for your great questions. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, to everybody for your questions and uh, participation. I really appreciate that. And I, as I said, that if you have any need for any of these uh, courses, contact uh, ProCept Associates. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.